The ability to fly around the world in a matter of hours has absolutely transformed human life. We now live in a world where the furthest place is only a day away, and as a result, the world has shrunk and expanded at the same time. But when we think about air travel, we're probably only thinking of those regular passenger jets that most of us have seen and many of us have traveled on. But the world of aircraft is a whole lot crazier than you might expect. And some of them may not even fly. But who's worried about a little old problem like that? From a sea monster to a flying pancake, we have all the weirder aviation experiments the world has seen. Here are 20 of the strangest aircraft ever built. Number 20. The Caspian Sea Monster With a name like Caspian Sea Monster, this must be one heck of a machine. Dating all the way back to the era of the Soviet Union, the Loon class Ekranoplan, try saying that without your teeth in, is a weird hybrid vehicle. It's part boat, part plane, and yes, part monster. It was the only one of its kind ever built, and it must have been a lonely monster indeed. First coming into existence in 1987, the general idea behind it seemed to have been a combination of airplanes and ships, thus creating a vehicle that could move over the water without actually having to touch it. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the sad and lonely sea monster had spent over 30 years hidden away at a pier in southern Russia, it sounds like a Victorian melodrama at this point. But after three decades of solitary exile, the Colossus has finally found its way back into the world after it was extracted from its prison and returned to dry land. A relic of a bygone era where building big scary monsters was part of the Cold War posturing that played out between the USSR and their mortal enemy, the United States of America. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Nemeth Parasol The Nemeth Parasol was a pioneering aircraft designed by Stephen Nemeth from Dayton, Ohio. Making its debut flight in 1934, this prototype featured a circular wing set in a parasol configuration attached to an Alliance A1 Argo two-seat biplane fuselage. Nemeth's vision was to create a plane that could conveniently store in a large garage rather than a hangar and would be easy to fly. To achieve this, he collaborated with students from the University of Miami to construct the wings. The Nemeth wing spanned an impressive 15 feet and would be equipped with flaps and ailerons. Thanks to its large wings, the Nemeth Parasol displayed remarkable performance during testing. It could take off in a mere 63 feet and achieve a top speed of 135 miles per hour. Additionally, the innovative circular wing design allowed for unique capabilities, such as using the wings as a parachute to execute a short 25-foot landing. Despite its successful test flights, the Parasol did not attract interest for further production. The fate of the lone plane remains unknown, but its success inspired the creation of other experimental aircraft with circular wings, such as the SAC AS-6, the Vought XF-5U, and the Avrocar. Number 18. The Star Bumblebee 2 The Star Bumblebee 2 is an experimental aircraft purposefully designed and built to claim the title of the world's smallest airplane. I guess that's a good reason, as any, to build a plane, really. Designed and constructed by Robert H. Starr in Phoenix, Arizona, the Bumblebee 2 aimed to break the record for the world's smallest biplane. Starr had previously been involved in other aircraft holding the same title. The Bumblebee 2's design resembled Starr's original Bumblebee 1, both featuring biplanes with negative staggered wings and conventional landing gear. However, the Bumblebee 2 was even smaller and lighter, with a fuselage made of welded steel tubing covered by sheet metal and wings covered in aircraft plywood. The power would be provided by a Continental C85 engine producing 85 horsepower. 
On April 2nd of 1988, at Marana Airport near Tucson, Arizona, the Bumblebee II achieved the world record for the smallest piloted airplane. Unfortunately, during the third flight, the aircraft crashed due to an engine failure at 400 feet of altitude. This crash would result in the destruction of the Bumblebee II and severe injuries to Robert Starr, who would eventually recover. The Bumblebee I is now on public display at the Pima Air and Space Museum. The name Bumblebee would be chosen by Starr as a reference to the myth that bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly based on standard aerodynamics, just like many skeptics had claimed about this Bumblebee aircraft. Number 17. The Edgeley Optica the Edgeley Optica is a quirky and unique little aircraft that stands out in the world of aviation. Developed by John Edgeley in the late 1970s, this eye-catching aircraft was specifically designed for aerial observation and surveillance attacks. Although being too eye-catching is probably not an ideal feature in a craft that's meant to be somewhat stealthy in its surveillance work, but what the heck do I even know? I sit in my pajamas in my basement all day and run my mouth. One of the most striking features of the Optica is its twin boom design, resembling a dragonfly. This setup allows for excellent visibility and optimal viewing angles, making it perfect for observing the ground below. The aircraft's large bubble-like canopy offers a 270-degree view, providing an unparalleled vantage point for reconnaissance missions. Its spacious cockpit can accommodate both a pilot and an observer, making it an ideal platform for aerial photography and surveying tasks. Thanks to its slow and stable flight characteristics, the Edgeley Optica can loiter over an area for an extended period, making it highly effective for surveillance operation. But despite its unique design and capability, the Optica has faced some challenges in the market. Limited production and financial difficulties have hindered its widespread adoption, which results in only a small number of aircraft being built. The aircraft's dragonfly-like silhouette and its exceptional observation capabilities have earned it a special place in the aviation world. Today, the Edgeley Optica continues to serve in various roles, which includes law enforcement, aerial surveying, and research. Number 16. The XF-85 Goblin this funny little aircraft would be designed back in 1948 purely to defend the Convair B-36 nuclear-capable bomber. So the sole purpose of the aircraft would be to travel alongside the big, so-called peacemaker, B-36 nuclear weapon bomber aircraft. They were able to travel without the need to refuel, even intercontinentally, as the general notion behind these goblins was that they would be carried within the bombers themselves and could be launched and sent outside of the aircraft in order to defend against any potential attacking enemies. This mini-parasite aircraft was the result of a problem that was created by the success of the peacemakers. These intercontinental bombers were too efficient and outflew all the existing fighter aircraft that could be used to defend them. The Goblin Parasite aircraft, however, was only able to fly alongside the bomber. It couldn't even land since it featured no landing gear and was required to reattach to the bomber in midair. That was all well and good, except that the little plane was good at being released and not so good at being retrieved once again. The Goblin had no landing gear, so if it were released, it was then necessary for the mothership, that being the B-36, to haul it back in by way of a hook and trapeze system. That, as it turned out, was much easier said than done. The thing that caused the most difficulty in this process was that the tiny plane got buffeted about so much by the turbulence from the larger jet that it was virtually impossible to hook it back in. After seven test flights and a combination of the B-36 bomber and its little companion the Goblin, there were only three successful connections between the plane and the trapeze. The project would ultimately be abandoned, and the Goblin never flew from the B-36. Poor little Goblin. Number 15. The Horton Wingless The Horton Wingless aircraft, created by William Horton from California in 1952, earned its name due to its unique design. Well, duh. Horton claimed that the entire aircraft acted as a simple airfoil with vertical fins, utilizing all surfaces for lift. Although he had lacked the funds to develop it, Horton teamed up with billionaire Howard Hughes and Harlow Curtis. During a successful but brief test flight, the plane had showed promise 
However, the venture failed when Hughes demanded full credit for patents and production rights, a demand that Horton refused. This would lead to a legal battle initiated by Hughes. Ugh, billionaires. Are they the actual worst? Which halted any further development of the aircraft. Hughes went as far as destroying the prototype and partially constructing production versions like a big sulking baby. The lawsuit even involved a false claim that the aircraft couldn't fly, despite witnesses, photographs, and even videos proving otherwise. Horton faced jail time for selling stock in the company, which was related to the airplane that supposedly couldn't fly, and also encountered violent confrontations with people who were associated with Hughes and Curtis due to the legal battle and resulting injunctions. <laughs> wow. Number 14. The Blériot 125 The Blériot 125, whose name I have no doubt mispronounced, showcased at the 1930 Paris Salon de something or other that I also cannot pronounce. It was a unique passenger aircraft that captured significant attention. Its design would be unconventional, featuring a high wing supported by twin fuselages, and each of those fuselage housed a luxurious cabin for six passengers, along with a toilet and a baggage compartment. Above the center section, there was an enclosed cabin for three crew members. The tailplane was a monoplane with four fins and rudders, situated at the rear of the twin fuselages. The landing gear would consist of tandem pairs of wheels partially enclosed in the bottom of the fuselages. Powering the aircraft would be two Hispano Sueza engines positioned in tandem on the wing center section, with one tractor and one pusher propeller. Although ahead of its time, this design faced many challenges. When it took its maiden voyage on March the 9th of 1931, it demonstrated poor flight quality, which one would imagine in a flying machine is a fairly significant hindrance. Despite ongoing testing until 1933 and being allocated the civil registration FALZD, the aircraft had failed to secure an official flight certificate and was eventually scrapped in the following year. Number 13. Curtis Model D The Curtis Model D, also known as the Curtis Pusher, was a significant aircraft in the early days of aviation. Developed by aviation pioneer Glenn Curtis, it first took to the skies in 1911. The Model D was a strong departure from conventional aircraft designs of that era, as it featured a unique pusher configuration. In the pusher configuration, the engine and propeller were located behind the pilot, pushing the aircraft forward rather than pulling it like most contemporary airplanes. This design would offer improved safety for the pilot, as the propeller was placed away from the front of the aircraft. The Curtis Model D would quickly gain popularity, becoming a favorite for flying exhibitions, aerial stunts, and early aviation training. Its versatility and reliability had made it a successful aircraft for various purposes. The aircraft's simple design made it accessible to a wide range of pilots, contributing to its widespread use in both military and civilian roles. Many aviators of the era, including the famous pioneer Lincoln Beachy, had performed daring stunts and acrobatics in the Curtis Model D, thrilling crowds and demonstrating the potential of aviation. As the aviation industry evolved, more advanced aircraft came to the picture, and the Curtis Model D would gradually fade from the limelight. However, its impact on the early development of aviation cannot be overstated. The Curtis Model D had played a crucial role in shaping the aviation landscape and paving the way for future innovations in flight technology. Number 12. USS Macon Known somewhat hilariously as a flying aircraft carrier, if you can even conceive of such a thing, the USS Macon was an airship with a rigid structure that was owned and used by the United States Navy back in the early 1930s. You know, when airships were a thing. Although, it would seem insane that the USS Macon was actually capable of carrying aircraft. In fact, it could hold up to a total of five Curtis F-9C Sparrowhawk biplanes. These single-seat parasite aircraft were used for general scouting stuff, and if they wanted to train Navy pilots in the early years of naval aviation, then the airship could carry two-seat fleet N2Y1s for that purpose as well. Now, you may or may not be aware that the airship in general was fraught with difficulties, and there were many tragic endings to these flying machines. 
The USS Macon was not spared its own difficult ending, though. In February of 1935, the airship would be caught in a storm off the coast of Big Sur in California. It was lost, but most of the crew did survive. The wreckage itself is now listed on the United States National Register of Historic Places. Number 11. The Scaled Composites Proteus The Scaled Composites Model 281 Proteus is a versatile high-altitude aircraft that was designed and developed by Burt Rutan's renowned Scaled Composites. The Proteus would first take flight in 1998. One of the main features of this aircraft was its unusual twin-boom design, with a wide wingspan reaching over 77 feet. This configuration allowed the aircraft to carry out various missions, from atmospheric research to satellite launch support. Its high-altitude capabilities make it ideal for conducting scientific experiments and gathering valuable data about Earth's atmosphere. The Proteus is capable of carrying a variety of payloads, a modular interior can be reconfigured quickly to accommodate different instruments and equipment, making it a versatile platform for research and development. The aircraft's adaptability and flexibility have made it a sought-after asset for various governments and private organizations. Meanwhile, the Proteus has been extensively used for testing and supporting the launch of small satellites. By carrying launch vehicles to high altitudes, the aircraft can optimize the satellite deployment process, providing a cost-effective and efficient alternative to the traditional launch methods. Despite its incredible capabilities, the Proteus is a graceful and elegant aircraft. Its smooth lines and clean design exemplify Rutan's innovative approach to aerospace engineering. Over the years, the Scaled Composites Model 281 Proteus has continued to prove its worth in numerous missions, leaving a long-lasting impact on the aerospace community. Its ability to adapt and excel in diverse roles has solidified its place as one of the most remarkable high-altitude aircraft in the world. Number 10. The Leduc O-22 now for another French aircraft whose name I have no doubt mangled, we have the Leduc O-22. This was a cutting-edge French experimental aircraft that pushed the boundaries of aviation during the 1950s. Developed by a French engineer, the aircraft featured an innovative ramjet engine, setting it apart from traditional planes of its time. What had made this aircraft so unique was its unconventional launch method. To get the thing airborne, a carrier aircraft would take it up to a high altitude and then release it. Once free, the ramjet engine would kick into action, propelling the plane at high speeds. And thanks to its sleek design and powerful engine, it achieved impressive speeds of up to Mach 0.85. These high velocities were quite a feat for that era, proving the potential of ramjet-powered aircraft. However, like any other experiment, this plane also had its fair share of challenges. The aircraft's performance at low speed left something to be desired and control issues would surface during landing attempts. Despite its mixed results, it paved the way for future ramjet and supersonic flight research, offering valuable insights into the potential and complexities of high-speed flight. It also contributed to advancements in aviation technology that we see even today. Number 9. The Bartini Berev VVA-14 the Bartini Berev VVA-14 was an aircraft ahead of its time. Designed in the 1970s by an Italian Soviet engineer by the name of Robert Bartini, it was built by the Soviet Berev Aircraft Company and was a hybrid between an airplane and a hydrofoil. Dubbed rather uncatchily as the vertical takeoff amphibious aircraft, the VVA-14 was intended for maritime reconnaissance and anti-submarine warfare. Its unique feature was its ability to take off vertically from water, just like a seaplane, thanks to four lift engines and two large turbojets. The VVA-14's distinctive design would feature a tandem wing configuration with a smaller front wing and a larger rear wing. This layout would offer excellent stability and allow for efficient transition between vertical takeoff and horizontal flight. The VVA-14 faced numerous issues during its testing phase. There were problems with the complex hydraulic system, and the engine performance would hamper its progress. As a result, the project never really reached full production, and only two prototypes were ever built. Nevertheless, the VVA-14's ambitious design fulfilled part of its mission to demonstrate the Soviet Union's ambitious approach to aviation. 
Like so much of the stuff that happened during that era, it was most important to be seen to be making technological process, but not necessarily actually doing it. The suggestion of it was as important as the result. Today, one of the surviving VVA-14 prototypes can be found on display at an Air Force museum near Moscow, Russia. Number 8. Aerospace Line's Pregnant Guppy this time, the plane in question is the Super Guppy, a plane designed especially to transport some space stuff or even entire other airplanes. During the 1960s, the United States would be locked in a fierce battle of one-upmanship with the Soviet Union with the goal of being first to dominate space travel. It thus became necessary to be able to transport extremely large pieces of space equipment from one side of the United States to the other. They needed to do this as quickly and efficiently as possible. The space race was very real, and it felt like every second really did count. The first guppy in the series was the so-called Pregnant Guppy. This was named because of the airplane's appearance being reminiscent of the guppy fish, which gives birth rather than laying eggs. Those crazy engineers and their ideas. Later on, the development of the Super Guppy ironed out the issues of the original, allowing for the transportation of the gigantically proportioned parts for NASA in the big belly of the aircraft. Although the plane was fit for purpose, it had always been more complicated to fly than any regular aircraft. And so, a specialist crew had to be employed whenever the thing left the ground. It's no picnic getting this thing into the air, or indeed, safely bringing it back down once again. Number 7. The Vought XF-5U The Vought XF-5U, also known as the Flying Pancake, was an experimental aircraft that took unconventional approaches to aviation design. Developed during World II by Vought, it was an aircraft that had a rather unusual appearance, resembling a flying saucer, or as its nickname would suggest, a pancake. The XF-5U would be designed as a fighter aircraft with an emphasis on low drag and exceptional maneuverability. A circular wing design with no traditional tail or fuselage would aim to reduce air resistance and provide improved performance. The aircraft's two propellers were mounted in the center of the wing, giving it a bit of a weird look, even kooky. Despite its promising design, though, the plane would face problems and a load of delays during development. The project would eventually fall victim to changing military requirements and rapid advancement of jet aircraft. As a result, the XF-5U never entered mass production or even saw active service. Today, you can find the only existing prototype of this plane on display at the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. Its distinct appearance and intriguing history has made it a favorite amongst aviation enthusiasts. Although the Vought XF-5U Flying Pancake didn't achieve widespread fame or even combat success, it's still a symbol of innovation and creativity in aircraft design. Number 6. The M02J Open Sky This is an unusual jet-powered glider from Japan that was actually inspired by an aircraft that was flown in an anime. Wow! That's right! A person spent over a decade developing a real-life version of a glider that was flown by the protagonist in something that I can't pronounce, which was an anime from 1984. The movie depicted the protagonist exploring a post-apocalyptic world while riding on a jet-powered glider that is known as something else I can't pronounce. What are all these Japanese names in this script? This is a genuine, bona fide, full-size, one-person working version of that glider. But what do you think? Go ahead and start your discussion about it in the comments down below. And let me know how dumb I am for not being able to pronounce things. You know you want to. Number 5. The BD-BD-5J the BD-BD-5 was an innovative single-seat pusher prop home-built aircraft which emerged in the 1970s. Although it had gained popularity and many of the kits were sold, it also posed a whole bunch of different challenges for builders and pilots alike. Assembling the aircraft would often prove to be daunting for most home builders, and even when completed, it demanded a highly skilled pilot for safe operations. Nobody wants to be the pilot who wasn't skilled enough, now do they? In 1973, BD Aircraft took things to the next level by introducing the BD-5J, 
a jet-powered version. This aircraft would secure its place in history as the world's smallest jet aircraft, becoming a crowd-pleasing performer at air shows. Its appearance in the James Bond film Octopussy further solidified its fame, and today it's appreciated for its place in the remarkable advancements in aviation technology that took place in the 20th century and the daring spirit of all those who pushed the boundaries of flight. Number 4. Dornier Doe 335 the Dornier Doe 335 was a German World II aircraft known for its unconventional design and powerful performance. Introduced in the 1940s, this aircraft would be a unique blending of speed and firepower. One of the most distinctive features of the aircraft was its dual-engine configuration, with one engine located in the nose and another in the rear of the fuselage. This push-and-pull setup would allow the aircraft to reach impressive speeds, making it one of the fastest piston-engine planes of its time. The DOE 335 would be designed to serve multiple roles, which included bomber, interceptor, and heavy fighter. Its heavy armament, which was typically including cannons and machine guns, also made it a dangerous adversary in combat. The DOE 335 did face challenges during its development and production due to the complexities of its design and the ongoing pressures of World II. As a result, only a limited number of the aircraft would be built, and it never saw extensive combat action. Today, several surviving examples of the plane can be found in museums and private collections all around the world. Its unique design and historical significance continue to capture the interest of aviation enthusiasts and historians alike. Number 3. The PZL M15 Belfagor this plane would be nicknamed Belfagor after the noisy demon of the same name. Developed by a Polish aviation company for use in agricultural aviation, an important part of the Soviet Union's technological requirements. The M-15 would be created to succeed the Antonov An-2, which was the largest aircraft in the world ever. It was a behemoth of a cargo plane that could transport up to 250 tons of cargo at any given time. It measured more than 275 feet long, weighing 175 tons, before it had even began loading anything else on board. And so, the M-15 had a lot to live up to. Unfortunately, the entire process would be beset by difficulties, suffering from poor handling, high operational costs, and pretty limited range. In the end, they decided that the project was not going to achieve its goals, and the whole thing would be abandoned. Thousands were planned, but less than a couple of hundred were built. Number 2. Joby's Electric Aircraft Here we are, in the modern day, and apparently what the current world needs is air taxis. Who would have ever known? Especially in an era when we're attempting, at least in theory, to reduce emissions, who would have thought that the next most important idea in aviation is more air travel? Well, it turns out that the Joby Aviation Company has an answer for that. This is an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, the idea being that these four passenger piloted aircraft would be the solution to pollution and congestion by becoming the future of taxis. They claim that these planes will basically just leapfrog over all the traffic and travel up to 200 miles per hour at the same time. Well, that's nice when they're the only flying taxis, but what about when the gridlock of traffic is simply moved into the sky when all their competitors catch up? I don't really want to be a big old sky taxi party pooper, but moving all of the commuting upwards only creates a more dangerous air-based congestion problem, surely. But anyways, I'm sure that you all have plenty of marvelous ideas and opinions on this one, so go ahead and let me know all about them in the comments section down below. That's what it's there for, after all. Number 1. The Plymouth AA-2004 or the Flettner Airplane the Flettner Airplane, also known as the Flettner FL-282, was a German helicopter developed during World II. Designed by Anton Flettner, this aircraft was one of the first operational helicopters to see service combat. What had made the airplane unique was its coaxial rotor system, featuring two counter-rotating rotors that were stacked on top of each other. This configuration provided excellent stability and control, making it easier to fly than traditional single-rotor helicopters. Primarily used for reconnaissance, 
and observation missions, it's proved to be a valuable asset in naval operation. It could take off and land vertically from small platforms, such as ships, making it suitable for development in various scenarios. During the war, the Flattner airplane had demonstrated its capabilities in anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue missions, and convoy escort duties. Its compact size and maneuverability would allow it to access areas that other aircraft simply couldn't, earning it the nickname Colibri or Hummingbird. Although not as well known as some other wartime aircraft, the Flettner played a significant role in advancing helicopter technology, laying the foundation for future rotorcraft designs. That's all from today's Stranger Scenes from the Skies. Which of these strange aircraft caught your attention? Which of them would you actually be prepared to take a trip in? Let me know all of your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out all the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen 